So today we've decided to move the RV, hopefully to its final resting place. Um, we are parked a little too close to where our house is going to be built. So we're hoping to get the RV out of the way, set everything up for the last time. Um, so we just have a little bit more space away from construction. This place seriously is starting to look like a dump. As you can see, this is the corner post of what will be our house. Um, so it's a little too close for comfort because it's right next to where we kind of walk out of our front door here. So the goal will be to move the RV maybe 20, 30 feet back towards the wood line. Um, so we can still kind of be in this vicinity. However, just kind of out of the way of the excavators and all the other things that are gonna be coming to dig this hole for the foundation. So we're gonna move closer to the chickens. Kind of right here, right in front of that septic tank. Ready to go. Today we are going to be working on solving a problem that we've had for quite a few months, um, which is saggy awning syndrome. Um, something happened to the side of our awning where it no longer has the strength to hold up the entire awning up straight. I'll kind of show you here. As you can see, this side here is kind of down. This side here is strong and can hold up the awning much better. It results in our awning looking something like this. And no, it's not because we have that extra um, curtain attached. Um, it's just been this way for a while now. So it, my guess is probably from being left out in a storm. Um, perhaps something happened on this left side to one of the metal bars that holds it up. But so today we're just doing a quick fix and we're gonna use what we have on hand, um, which are sticks, you know, tons and tons of sticks where we are, tons and tons of trees. So, quick 10 minute fix for a saggy awning. Well, found this branch, kinda has a little bit of like a Y on the top, and it's just too hot to do anything right now. Um, there's a lot of work that we want to do out in the field, but it's just too hot. So we're going to try to fix saggy awning sy syndrome. <laughs> so let's cut this guy first and we'll see how it looks. That's a manly chainsaw you got there. It is a manly chainsaw. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. Well, are we going to dig it into the ground? I mean, is it too hot? I mean, it's, it's still slanted. I know. I think it needs to go over to give the left side a little bit more support. The left side? Yeah. It's still sagging. It's better. There we go. It's a little bit better. I mean, it's still slanted, but. but it's a heck of a lot better. Yeah. 
Well, there you have it. Our one and only project for this 90 degree boiling hot day. <laughs> and now we'll crack open some cool drinks and sit underneath the awning. Yeah. Well, do you want to figure out a way to... I do, yeah. To just extend the awning a little bit and let the kids have some shade to play under. So before we had the bottom of this extra shade attachment, um pulled out and, um, with strings on the bottom and then kind of nailed them into the ground, which allowed it to kind of come out on an angle. But um, our little three-year-old tripped over it at least three times. And then I think once. Nathan tripped over it once and then destroyed the whole thing. So <laughs> I think, yeah, if we mounted it up on sticks, I mean, you wouldn't walk into those. At least I hope you wouldn't. You know what would be great? Those metal T-posts. Mm. Well, we're rednecks. We use what we have. <laughs> it's literally like 20 degrees cooler in here. <sighs> Is this guy permanent? Oh, I don't know. My guess would be no, because there's always a chance that we have to move the RV again. Okay. What was the thought? path of least resistance is to pound the metal stake in and tie them up. Yeah. We went to Tractor Supply and got some T-posts, pounded those in, put our first log, and that was a heck of a lot easier than what we were doing before. Um, so with these other logs, I'm just going to add a little bit more rigidity um, for this thing. Awning? <laughs> Who knows? Perfect example of a project that was not even on our plan book. We had a need. Perfect. And then, you know, if it does start raining, we can just unhook it real fast and. There she be. Well, we got a nice cool place. So we had another night of just nonstop rain, 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 and more rain. So uh, according to the forecast, I have about an hour until more rain is coming. But I wanna take a look at our water collection, rainwater collection system that we have here. Um, we put this as part of the chicken coop, just a gutter coming in into the IBC tote. And let's see how much we have. Oh wow, we are at 75 gallons of water. Not bad for one night of rain. I hope that as this continues to fill up, we can use this for the chickens and for the garden. Uh, without having to tap into our well for any of that. Let's check on the chickens. So it looks like our brooder is a, a little undersized right now because they're getting out. The time that it took for me to get down here, set up my camera, it's already raining, but it's fine. It's just a drizzle. We're gonna just keep working. Um, these giant plants over here, they're called American pokeweed. And from what I gather, from what I, from what I Googled, um, no one wants to eat it. It's not good for livestock um, and it's invasive and it spreads like crazy. I don't want it taking over my pasture here. So I've worked hard to get whatever you want to call this so far. Um, and I don't want it turning into this. I don't have a mower and I, that might be a better way to keep it in check in the future as I grow my pasture. But I'm going to try to rip as much of this out today. Um, just to prevent it from overtaking. Thing I learned just now, this is American pokeweed and it's poisonous to a lot of pasture animals. And it's kind of like the Jurassic Park looking 
gigantic ones. Now this is American burnweed, which apparently is not poisonous, and apparently I can eat it. It's edible to humans. Um, but they also said once it flowers, it spreads seeds like crazy. They both do. Um, so it says to pull them both, but this will be my priority. So right now I have two contractor bags completely stuffed to the brim full of pokeweed. If anyone has any suggestions on what I should do, uh, I'm all ears. I think you know mowing the pasture would definitely help it from you know getting to seed. Um, I don't have anything to mow with right now, and my goal was to have the clover, the oats, and and the grasses to go to seed, um, and then you know cut it or mow it this fall. Um, I also don't want to lose my entire pasture to weeds that are poisonous for uh, the, the sheep that I plan on getting. It is actually currently drizzling right now, not too bad, but we're kind of at a loss right now on, on things to do because our tractor is uh, at the shop for some warranty work. Um, I guess I was a little rough on it or it wasn't up to spec, one or the other. Uh, fortunately it's all covered through the Kubota warranty. Once that's back, we'll have practically a brand new tractor, which will be great. So many things to do. We still have our a burn pile here that we need to finish up on before the house gets built. So one of the things that we're gonna have to work on fixing sooner than later is our chicken coop. Um, these doors that we made are out of that T111 plywood, and I'm assuming it's just because of the sun, but they're starting to warp and curve. And there's no question animals are gonna be able to get in there. So fortunately I do have these solid wood here, um, these rough sawn lumber planks that actually were originally my plan to, to make the doors out of. So that's something that we'll have to do probably the next week or so as uh, once, once we have a few days with no rain, as it is just, the, the chickens are growing. They're getting bigger and bigger. We had to upgrade our brooder because they were getting out. A little bit bigger now. Once they get out of this, we won't need it anymore. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much to everyone who has liked, everyone who has subscribed and commented. Um, and as I, like I mentioned before, if anyone has any suggestions on best way to help us grow our pasture here with uh, limited water and resources here, please let us know. I do think it's just gonna take some time and hopefully this clover and everything will go to seed and uh, we'll be able to win against um, these weeds soon enough. So until next time, we'll see you then. Thanks.